So I want to talk about the news that BRAP, the Australian motorcycle company, uh, is going into liquidation, is going bankrupt. And I just want to say that I'm really sad to, to hear about that and I want to give some of my reasons why why I thought they were a good company, why I, th why I think you know they had good products, they were a good company. So a lot of people actually you know hate on uh, the brand, on Brap. I've made two videos before. I've I made one positive video. My first one is like the first impressions, and I made a follow up like a long term ownership one, where I was talking about some of the problems. I got someone who disliked my video, my second video, because I was saying some negative, some of the problems I had, but I believe maybe it was someone from the company, but I don't think they watched the whole video, because in the end I talk about even, you know, despite the issues that I have, I still think it's a great, it's great value, you know, the amount of fun that you get, and it's still a fraction of the price of the more mainstream ones, and a lot of people like here in Australia it's an Australian company a lot of people I think are a bit cynical when they talk about BRAP as a company they just say they say oh it's just a it's just another Chinese cheap Chinese motorcycle and I don't believe that that's what it is the the you know the motorcycles are specified by you know the founder uh, Brad Smith so they're built in China but they're specified and if when you own one like you can really see the difference you know it's it's not uh, cheap Chinese you know firecracker motorcycles you can see like sure I did have problems with it but you can actually see the quality and the main structural parts you know the, the, the important parts I don't think it's fair just to say it's it's just another Chinese uh, cheap Chinese motorcycle I think I think what Brad was wanting to do, and I, and I believe they were successful, is you know there's a big gap between the cheap firecrack industries motorcycle and the mainstream, you know Yamaha. There's a big uh, price gap between those two, and I think Brad was sitting somewhere in between, maybe towards the lower end, but somewhere in between, bridging that gap. You know, decent quality and still comparable to you know a low cost. Chinese um, bike you know they weren't crazy extreme top spec race spec motorcycles like the mainstream ones they were just enough to have fun enough to do the job but not as you know cheap as the you know typical Chinese one like it was a good balance in between they had good styling and they were getting a following I think when I talk to people that about that I have a brap you know I went into the Yamaha dealer buying some oil and I was telling the guy that I have a brap and then he sort of quietly mentioned you know there was this little moment that he also owns a brap uh, so and they did get a big following they did get a big surplus in sales they had issues you know a uh, long time uh, you know especially during COVID long wait times issues through but I, I am happy with uh, my well, my purchase with them and the fun that I've had with this bike. Also, there's controversy with the founder, Brad Smith. So, uh, there was some controversy a few years ago, uh, and I think there was some uh, allegation of fraud. And from from what I know, there was he wasn't prosecuted. He was, you know, when he went, and he wasn't found guilty. So. That's the main thing that a lot of people forget. Usually in the, the media, they would talk about this big story, talk about the fraud, talk about all the allegations, and then in the end, they'll say, oh, and but he you know, was found not guilty or he wasn't prosecuted. And, and they tap that on at the end when that's the thing that actually has the most waiting. Like, you know, you watch something, I was watching something on the news the other day about some sort of sort of assault that happened and then in the end they say oh and this person wasn't prosecuted by police and it, just, it makes you think oh well you know the police aren't doing their job properly or this and that but you got to think about it who do you think scrutinized the situation the most was it the media or was it the police and 
also with like the current liquidation there's you know there's stories around people are saying that it's a bit dodgy uh, there was a lot of funding for the electric bike um, side of things and what happened is they've sold off BRAP has sold off the electric side electric bike side of the business and apparently to um, someone who was a board member of BRAP and then you know they it seems that they've left the you know the debt and the rest of the motorcycles just to sort of go into liquidation and, and become bankrupt um, so they just sort of cast it aside you know they kept the electric side and they just cast the rest out along with the debt so like I don't know what to make of it I don't know why like it could just be it could just be that business it's, it's tough to run a business these days you know the, there's inflation there's the cost of cost of living people don't have that much money interest rates have gone up and maybe these like financial pressures are the thing that that uh, you know the company just couldn't withstand it but the other thing to note is that he went into liquidation because of a one million dollar debt what is one million dollars for a company it's it's nothing I mean I've, I've got a million dollar debt like most people have a million dollar debt like you go to a restaurant you pay a million dollars these days you know it's really it's it's bizarre like and this is the thing that's sort of causing causing it to go bankrupt but the saddest part like I, I was a bit saddened I was saddened that BRAP is you know going away uh, I liked I liked what they had I liked their products not to say that I'm like a diehard fan but I just I think it was nice to have them around they had you know a lot of people um, a lot of following but the other thing that hurt me more was these rumors that they sold off the electric like it's like they kept they wanted to keep the electric side of the business the electric motorcycle and they just wanted to throw away the internal combustion engine along with their debt you know I, I think there's no soul in electric motorcycles I think internal internal combustion engines are what make motorcycles cool it's what makes them fun it's the sound it's the popping it's you know playing around with the clutch it's what gives a motorcycle character and it this situation is saying you know businesses are saying that it's not worth it businesses are saying let's just throw away the worthless dinosaur internal combustion engine we'll keep the electric because that's the future and that is what I think is really sad and I really hope that that motorcycles avoid this trajectory that they're going I think there always needs to be internal combustion like a big following an internal combustion engine motorcycles you know it's these crazy emissions for you know motorcycles only make up one percent of transport and and they're being hit with like these strict emissions you know Euro 5 it's caused a lot of iconic bikes to just be out of production you know the R1 the R6 um, a lot of you know a lot of other 600s they're just not being made anymore because they can't keep up and I just think it's really sad I, I I don't know why they 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 go after the motorcycles which is one percent but they leave the big business like the bigger contributors um, you know the agricultural the the marine all of that they they don't want to touch them but the little guy the motorcycles they're, they're the pushover they're the ones that uh, get hit with these strict Euro 5 and um, emissions and things like that when they don't even make that much uh, as a whole they don't make that much and it kills the motorcycle it, it kills what it is so it's it's really it's really sad to see a company Australian company that they uh, their pride was you know making bikes making dirt bikes you know Aussies love bikes for a small population relatively small we have a really big motorcycle following you know we've got some really big names in MotoGP um, you know like dirt bikes you know motocross Australia is big Australians love their motorcycle a lot of people ride like a big proportion of people either ride dirt bikes 
either you know for the farms um, it's Australia's got a very big motorcycle culture and we had an Australian company and to ditch it for electric or because they were struggling a bit you know they started off I think good I don't know maybe it was the haters maybe the haters got to um, the the owners and the people but I, I think I think they were for the price yes you have some problems but it's still well under what you'd pay for mainstream so anyway that's all I wanted to talk about uh, if you like my content please don't forget to hit the like button uh, make a comment on what you think and if you like my content in general uh, please subscribe and take it easy and ride safe